Hello, Spy fans. Welcome back to the commentary desk here live in Cologne in the ESL studios for game number three, SK Gaming versus Mortality. And Mortality, we said last game was a must win. This game is a uh, do or somehow die. more than that. Do or die yeah. is the only yeah. situation they've got on their cards right now. Things we can discuss, though, going in from the whole tournament so far. Circa, Vulcan, Ra, Nu, Wa, Thor, and Freya, all 100% pick and ban rate. Wow. All 100% yeah. pick up. I mean, that's the priority in the EU right now. It shows you a lot of what's on the Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a very, very interesting stat there. Um, and shout, well, us, shout us to the Reddit for that, because those yeah. are the guys that are doing all the work for that Shout one. out Reddit. Thank you. Uh, Mortality on the left side, SK Gaming on the right, and Mortality right away. Ain't no Bakasura. Nope, they don't want to deal with it again. When Maniac pulled it out, that was it. Access denied to that god for the rest of the tournament. Well, possibly, potentially, yeah. for SK Gaming. Nuar banned away once again from SK Gaming. It's back over to Mortality. Will they change up their bands? Mm. From last game, it was Vamana, and there's Vamana yeah, again. Yeah, Vamana again. They can't, they can't let Maniac Focus on SK Gaming. Which is, you know, just unbelievable for SK Gaming. You go from, he never plays that god to, you can't let him have it. You can't let him have it because he's got an overall, it's almost 90% win ratio now. It has to be. Like, he's so strong. Circa, must, Circa pick, gone. must band, like I said, pick band. Uh, yeah, Vulcan gets through, so Vulcan this will be first pick. Going to be picked up as well. But does Isis. that go to Fexas then? <sighs> Madness. I don't, I just don't know. I mean, does it go to Fexas? Does it go to Sai? I mean, Sai was going to go to Vulcan too. No, yeah, he's a perfectly capable Vulcan. But uh, SK takes Ra Thor in response to that Vulcan first pick. Mortality. Well, they're going to go ahead and uh, finally give Moex a no damn Freya. hunter. No Freya pick, first of all, straight into Anher. Freya will they, go to SK, most likely. They're going to give Freya. So they're going to do Freya Thor? That's, yeah, I mean, we've seen it all day, but. Ah. Will they really do that? Or. I mean, they can take Rom, they can take Apollo, and it's looking to be Apollo, and it is Apollo. Molex, Molex basically steps up this game and said, guys, get me off Freya. Yeah. I want to fight this guy. Yeah, I know. I, why not? I and, you know, fight. I think that may be more so than the Isis or the lane swap or whatever, was just put Moex on his signature god. And has one of his signature gods. He's also got a great Apollo. He's got a great Rama as well. Yeah, but, but when you think of Moex. Well, and her just for EU is over a 75% win ratio. Yeah. He doesn't really get picked on NA at all. Rama on EU, though, one of the most picked banned uh, hunters overall. I think he was like the first picked hunter in every single game yeah. of SPL, pretty much. But he had a negative win ratio, which is quite surprising. Into picks, uh, to ban phase once again. Sylvanas taken away from SK Gaming. They don't want to see Frezzy on that. They do not, and Mortality on the other side. They're going to get rid of the Amir. So taking that away as well. And they may want to pick up Ares, given that Amir ban. Potentially, they could look to try. It seems unlikely, but they could. Um, mm. And, you know, I want to see Mortality 4-core this. Like, they have Vulcan on her Mercury, which is a lot of late game. And I would like to see, in fact, another late game carry in this. Like, I, like, I would love to see, like, Loki. Really weird to see Ymir banned by Mortality against yeah, SK indeed. Game. Considering you know? Frezzy is, yeah. Well, Frezzy's great in it, but they clearly don't want SK Game Badger to be able to get these gods. They don't want him on self They don't want him on... I think on they get Geb here, right? Tim. Yeah. So they're going to have to go with Geb. But then back up to Mortality, what are they going to do? That they, they could go with the Ares Bacchus. Okay, yeah, they'll take the Bacchus and then... It's something that we've seen a lot from Frezzy as well. He's the second most played Final god. pick, like I said, I want to see a carry here. I want to see a fourth carry. I mean, I you know, they need they need to secure that late game. They really do. Um, or well, at least a big damage dealer. A, well, that's a perfect sort of call yeah, for both, really. Yeah, bring damage it some more team fight. Game. Yeah, more team fight. Uh, more front line, let Mercury and on her run wild. I mean, that's one of the gods that Maniac's been playing as well in the solo lane Indeed, recently. Yeah. So it's another god taken away once again from SK Gaming. And once again, if you look at the, the god pool that they've got there, SK Gaming, that raw pick should be for Captain Twig, which means they were letting Maniac get last pick once again. And that's where the focus is going to be one more time. Yeah, what is he going to pick into the Zhang Kui? Back is down. So uh, maybe another, uh, maybe a passive farmer here for them. Uh, something with some lane control, perhaps. They could run Freya. Aphrodite. Shark is still available. Afro, well, Afro, great call. I mean, Afro, main next Afro is fantastic. Yeah, I think he's Af even got Chongo, which is good against Zhang as well in the laning phase because of the amount of um, anti sustain she's got with exorcism. But he's going to go with the chalk. They'll go with the chalk. Okay. Um, this just means they're going to be relying very heavily once again on Twig, which is surprise, surprise. For the magical damage, yeah, they will rely on him. I mean, he hit a lot of the snipes that game overall. Hmm. But Thor in the jungle, zero, still on 100% win ratio now because he won that last game. And with what he did with Ra setting up those combos, it worked out really well for them. See if they can transition it into their game again. It did. They have significantly less lockdown here, though, on the side of SK Gaming in this game. Mortality really uh, holding the Frezzy, cake. Frezzy's playing two roles. He's OP. <laughs> Dr. Frezzy. No more Sayo. We've got Sayo. <laughs> We've got Frezzy and made him Frezzy in the support role it, as well. Speaking of, Sayo, he will be picking up that Vulcan, so it's going to be mid lane for Sayo. Potentially. 
Potentially. Like they could they could still roll swap right now with the gods they've got and put him in solo. In oh, no, he's locked in. No, no, but I mean... Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Put him in the solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they could put Vulcan up against um, Chuck in that lane and let Fexes farm off against Twig in mid because that's generally going to be a farm lane between those two anyway. Yeah, indeed. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what they choose to do here. The ball's technically in Mortality's court because they're the ones with all the work to do. Mm. With three games three to games go right now, they have to win three in a row. You can see the screen there's Frezzy. He's going to be playing back as this game. Rafa had a great game one, game two. Kept the farm going. Couldn't find anything else for himself, though. So that one really didn't work out for the team. Play that Mercury last game. Going to be once again on that Mercury as we look yeah. over once to Once again, factors. those hex graphs, as you see, mobility so heavily in favor of SK Gaming. And they've done a great job of capitalizing off of those highly mobile teams they have drafted in all three games now mm. in this matchup versus Mortality. Yeah, so the, the boys very serious faces on the realizing importance. It's 2-0 in this head-to-head. -head. Overall, through the SPL, they were 2-2 two, two tied before this one happened as well. So that is a, 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 technically an exact record. It's 2-0 at the moment. There is two game advantage in favor of SK Gaming. Oh What's like EA Sports going to be on the left-hand side? Ooh, it's a heavy hammer start for Chalk, but let's go ahead and introduce your teams, ladies and gentlemen. Blue team on the bottom side of your mini-map, left side of your spectator UI, wearing the blue trunks. It's Mortality Esports fighting for their tournament life. I, Raffer, in the jungle as Mercury. That puts Moex matched up with Frezzy in the dual lane as on her and Bacchus. Fexes will be your solo lane as Jungkwe. And finally, Sayo in the mid lane as Vulcan. Across the way, we have SK Gaming 2-0 up right now. One more game is match point for them to go to the World Championships. Captain Twig will be in the mid lane playing Raw. Reels playing once again that Apollo he's been so dominant on in the duo lane. Gabby's played by Badger in the duo lane alongside him as a support role. Zero's in the jungle as Thor. And finally, Maniac, Maniac in that solo lane playing Chuck. And, uh, well, I doubt we'll have very much early aggression here. Um, I think SK is perfectly happy to take the fight into the late stages of the early game. Uh, you know, just try to make plays at the end of the laning phase. They don't... Not a team that really uh, needs to get an early pick here. Whereas Mortality could benefit a lot, it, it, not only in just, you know, getting the gold, getting the experience, but just morale and kind of the feels. Just the feels overall. Well, three months start on the right-hand side from Mortality. This means that Rafa wants to get his blue buff early. They don't want to have any issues with invasions or anything crazy like that. They want to get that over to Fexer straight away. We see this quite commonly when we know the solo lane is not going to be taking Hog at the start of the game. So they rotate away from doing the red buff earlier just to make sure they don't get invaded at blue. Yeah, but it is a Hog two on both of the junglers here, meaning that uh, it's going to be a potential very early rotation from zeros to try to either snipe away that red or the backside XP camps. Same goes, of course, for Raffer. Now, this is a farm lane. Fex says playing um, jean in this lane, a Maniac on that on that chuck. This is potentially just a straight up farm lane. Now, if this rotation of having Fex says in the solo lane is going to pay off, Bart, this has to go at least even. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. To make it, this it must, yeah. Uh, but but Fex says, I mean, jean Fairly forgiving He's when it mage. comes to being, you know, a few hundred gold behind. He's a mage. You play mid lane as mages. It's not a big rotational thing in terms of god pool then. Yeah. So he should, in effect, be able to deal with the situation. And if he's as strong as we think he should be on this, we'll find this one out because Rafa might get aggressed on again. And this happened last time, but this time he does escape the danger for now. Bit of poke once again back onto Zhang, as you can see on the duo side. Because he Moek has zero. Zeros is shadowing away. him, but they have the ward here. They know where he's going. But they've both got hog too, so this is a weird shadow. Oh, Raffer may want to this, fight. This here. is a level difference because he's not taking red buff just yet. This is why Zeros feels like he can fight. Oh, he he's can't got fight more here. abilities. But it's going to be a backwards and forwards. The throw away comes out from Raffer. And Zeros still not finished. And with Captain Twig there, he forced the hog. Yeah, he which means that they can look at the camp. red. They should, yeah. Uh, Twig and Zeros continue to fight. Oh, now leaping forward. In hands coming through. If the Sayo gets too close, he's going to get the extra bonus damage that's on Zeros, but that's a big meatball. It's good poke, but the poke is split between the two characters, and Sayo was very late on this rotation, and still they have to back away. They're going to have to give up the red buff on this side because you can see as well, Chuck has pushed up. Maniac pushed Fexes in to make sure he could rotate in. They don't take the damage wait, buff. Wait, why is Sayo moving forward here? Because they think they were doing the red buff, and they weren't, but they're not going to engage because Rafa smartly comes to mid lane to soak yeah. some experience because he was behind anyway. But now they know the red buff's not been done yet because Captain Twig's not got it and there's no way he could transverse that quick. And now Zeros falls back and will take it. Spin to win and we'll have the Hog 2 available as well. But the Hog timing going to be a little bit off now. Uh, not optimal, but beautiful stuff. Maniac rotates over to soak some of this Rafa XP. wasting a bit of time here. The pings went down him immediately from Twig to say he's coming from this angle, he's coming from this angle. Red buff does go down. Fex says he's doing fine in the lane, but Maniac sucks more experience up by stealing that one away, helping with the experience gain there. Raffer's going to go for his orange buff on the left side of the map now, instantly going into the hog. Just needs to get this one down. And, uh, you know, he it, 
just Raffer, you just feel like he's got to make a play here. He, he's trying to make a play, but again, but again, once again, putting the pressure onto him time and time again. This has been SK's game plan. No ward there. spotting out this rotation to the Raffer. left side. He's only level far, though. Can he make a big play out of this? That's the question. Reels does have his ultimate available. Badges is going to walk away. The shield is on cooldown now as he uses it. Impaling to the wall. Great mess from Reels, though. And Reels is focusing. Moex forcing him away. Badger can just walk away because the meat stick in hand from Prezi, or the guitar in this case, is not going to do enough damage. Yeah, they can't get enough out of this. And once these uh, back archers do go down, Badger will have level five and become much, much harder to gank. Midcap's going to spawn up now. You can already see SK gaming in position. Bacchus wants to get involved. Frezzy's around, but still only level four. Badger's going to zone him out. Yeah, he's they should even, get both here. Well, he's not even trying to soak the experience there. He was just trying to zone him out. And with that rollout, he should get to the other camps perfectly in time, even soak up some mid two. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There you go. So uh, SK Gaming is going to take both the mid camps and uh, once again grab the early game advantage. And then once, yep, four members of the team there for those right hand harpies. So a nice experience share between them. Fex is going to recall back to base there. He's out of mana. The lane has pushed in. Chuck should be back. Probably missed two minions there in terms of gold. But should get the experience from all of them at least. And once again, with the stage where SK Gaming are the ones putting the pressure on and Mortality have just had to eat the pressure, really. They have, but they do have Moex on, on her. And he can make plays, but. He can. Reels. But he's up against the Geb, and the Geb shield is great about getting rid of the Impale as well. Yeah, yeah. And Reels is very good at Apollo. I just want to see those two. Yeah, they, there's going to be a man fight at some point in this game. And when it comes, it will be important because if Mortality don't win that man fight, I'm pretty certain it could be the nail in the coffin that is Mortality's hopes of going to the finals. They've already slipped behind here uh, by about 1,000, 1,200 XP and 700 gold off of those uh, early mid camps. That's red buff and the mid camps that were both stolen away that caused that big dis difference in experience. I mean, where the, where the golden experience differential is, I mean, some of it is onto Frezzy, who's kind of caught up as well. Moex is a level behind Apollo as well because Rafa had to soak experience. This is the thing about putting a jungler behind, but he has to go and farm somewhere, mm. but who does he put behind instead? Right. Because he goes and steals experience from the lane. Well, uh, it should be Fexes that they, that they leech off of. He's mm. had the least impact, and they need Sayo to be a damage carry. But if he stays in that inside of the lane, then mid gets ganked, duo gets ganked, Gold true, Fury true. attempts. It's very, very difficult Look to Look at the warding. Them. Four wards at every, uh, you know, a ward at every entrance this into the mid lane. This is better warding from Mortality, though. Look at the ward. Like you said, the wards here, they didn't have these wards. This was SK last game. Mm. They had the ward control all around. This time round, it appears the ward coverage from Mortality has picked up massively. Bach is getting picked out as he moves back to the duo lane. It's going to be three-man recall on the left side of the map. Devourer's Gauntlet's completed on to your Apollo. Uh, on her is going to be... No, they're going to get back to the wave at about the exact same time here. Uh, it's going to kind of come down to how Frezzy elects to play this. Uh, does he just go and in-hand each of the minions just to get that extra XP? He's just going to stall lane. No, he's going to go for the burp, yeah. And he's going to hit everything here. Uh, not going to clear it, though, but he does leech one away. Two minions not going to go the way of on her here. I think he started that, cancelled it, realizing that he was actually stealing Three. away farm from Moex, who was already behind in this lane. It's Four. not going to be that helpful. Honestly, overall, it's going to keep the lane even. Reels gets back in time. Moex loses a little bit on that one, but a big rotation from SK. They're starting the Gold Fury. No, 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 no. no. That, was a, that was a ward clear. There's a ward right underneath the base of the Gold Fury. They just cleared that with a sentry. Once again, we see SK Gaming getting this Gold Fury control around the six minute mark. And every time they've done this, the only team that really gave them a big issue was TSM in these back and forward fights that lasted a very long time. Mm, yeah, yeah, indeed. Here, let's take a look at Zero. Zero's has elected to go for Berserker Barrage here, not the Tectonic, I'm sorry, not the uh, Mjolnir's Attunement for his damage spell. I mean, technically, going for the Berserker Barrage means that you're going to get confirmed damage off when you get into the team fight. Mm -hmm. Spinning on multiple targets, when these crazy fights happen, obviously with the passive as well involved, it increases the damage done. Significantly more damage potential out of that spell than Mjolnir's Attunement, but it's just it's there is, so much more guaranteed. It's, it's so much guaranteed as well. Yeah. That's the big issue between it. So it's, it's a safer option is the big key between those two abilities that you could max first over the other. But it reduces his gank potential onto single targets, right? When he's, when he's he finds one person in the jungle, he's going to be less effective. Yeah, he is going to be a little bit less Especially effective the Mercury. on the burst damage. Yeah, because, you know, we're spinning on a Mercury. Mercury can just escape that one. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So that, that makes it a bit tougher for him to kind of spot out that Mercury and, and look for those big blow-up kills. But it does afford him additional team fight. And, uh, well, uh, as it's gone so far, that's Moex. really been the name of the game. He needs to be a bit careful here. Has to leap away as Zeros was eyeing up. See, I love Frezzy's position in here. Frezzy's doing a good job. He you knows he's not getting any farm out of this one. But he's actually just zoned out Zeros from getting towards the speed buff that Rafa desperately needs. Rafa's taken a hell of a long time to bring that buff down, in all honesty. But he does finally drop it. And bad. Frezzy had to sit around and wait for that because he couldn't let them get invade and steal that speed before away so important to a mercury yeah he it's an absolute must-have for him and it, it helps accelerate his farm uh, quite a bit here now 
Is itemization, it's boots, and will it be that golden bow again? It, it's always golden bow, pretty much. The, item is, the, the cost of the item for the stats that it gives you is yeah. so worthwhile, especially onto Mercury. That crit proc chance of the percentage is only like 7%, but it's so worth it when it actually yeah. does land. When it does hit, yeah. can turn, turn a fight completely on its head. Yeah, I mean, that's how we saw the Vamana get first blooded yeah, in exactly. uh, the previous series. Exactly. In the previous series, exactly the same opportunity that they had there. 7 minutes 54 in this game. It's all tied up in terms of kills and towers. No goal for is taken, but the golden experience lead is in SK's favor. And that's just thanks to the early game aggression. Fexa is a bit low on HP here versus Maniac, who uh, once again, you know, has pretty good control of the lane. Fexus will get some HP off of that card and uh, purge demons uh, combination there. But, uh, you know... I mean, Fexus, Fexus hasn't been greedy with his build either, because sometimes yeah. you see the Warlock Sash Rush. Oh, big engagement oh, big going engagement. on the Gold Fury straight away. Earthshaker comes out. Sile gets first blood of the game. He got rotated by Zeros, but here comes Reels once again. Raph is there to protect him. Sile should be okay, though, to escape. Can the Snipe come out and find it? Woo! No, it cannot. It only connects with Rafa. So it's a one for zero exchange that went in Mortality's favor. That's what they needed. Sile actually popped down a turret right as So Beautiful came out, and it didn't even deploy. It just instantly got blown up. Straight away. Poor guy. Really nice rotation coming out from Mortality there to do that kind of initiation. Sile did a good job with that ultimate. This first blood. The damage. First blood is very important. This first blood is like the most important first blood mortality has ever gotten. Oh, for sure. This is the, the sign of life. They actually have a kill lead. Now, granted, they're still down and experiencing gold, but they got a kill. But they have a kill. They got the board. first kill. They have a lead on kills too, which is another thing. Right, yeah, just the, the feeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you don't take golden experience right now, he's still in SK's favor, but that was just an important start to the game just to have a small little... Glimmer of hope of like, okay, guys, we're not out of it. Sayo may have stepped up finally because he was talking about like he's going to communicate a lot more. He's had a few issues at lands before. Like he's played well. Just get discouraged and, and just turtle up. But here comes a goal fury attempt once again from SK Gaming. It looks like Mortality want to collapse, but can they collapse in time? Is the question. 30% health is very, very low. 27%. There's the hot goal fury destroyed. Desert Fury comes out. Badger's dropping low, but not low enough. The Mez from Reels impale from Moex forces the disengage. A one, it was a zero for zero exchange. Golf here goes to SK Gaming, and the ex lead just extends. M uh, Maniac, I'm sorry, is going to force Fexes out of lane and steal away his blue buff. So, uh, solo lane will be going in favor of SK here for at least the next 90 seconds or so. I mean, with, going back to Fexes' build as well, a lot of the Jean-Quiz in the solo like to rush the Warlock Sash. He ulted that to confirm. Yeah, he ulted to get it. I mean, he knew he knew Fexes must have been coming back. He, yeah, he tried he, to He confirm. also knows that he doesn't have very much kill potential against the Jean-Quiz, so the ultimate's not going to be very important. Mick Cap's being down, down. Yeah. being down. Yeah. He's not going to have a big engagement when he's going to need the ultimate. It was weird, but it, it made sense in a weird way because he couldn't have it stolen away. Yeah, and, and what else was he going to do with that ultimate, as you pointed out? So uh, heads up play by Maniac there, and they're going to take their back camps as well. He's not going to space out those blue buffs, and this time Jonquay is going to try to aggress it again. Maniac may blue. reset this. Go on. Go on. Be no. brave. No. Nope. Not brave. No. Oh. He is. Uh, he does not want to be the reason that his team falls behind here by giving up a kill to that chalk. That's very true. Well, in terms of golden experience right now, they're a little bit behind. Obviously, that first blood has gone in their favor. Ooh. With the goal fury down for another three and a half minutes now, it's going to just come down to farming and playing safe. I think I'd like to see from Frezzy and Badger them just to rotate into the jungle a little bit and stay out of the action. Let the other lanes get a little bit further ahead because I think they both want to get Moex and Fex as sorry reels as big as possible. But look where Rafa is right now. I don't know if this they had a ward to spot him out in this position. He's waiting around, looking for this sonic boom. If this connects right, you can already see Zeros on the other side of the jungle right yeah. now. But on the other side of the jungle, you can see those trading out, so they might be a bit... Looks like they know. ...either side. I think this... Uh, no, man, I don't know how they would know. But they, they're this, trending back towards the tower, I mean... I mean, we're looking right now on the screen, you can see Maniac and Fexus trading backwards and forwards, but that's to be expected between that lane. Speed buff comes back up once again, and I like Four. what Frezzy's doing. They're oh. going to make a play on Fexus here. I think he's too far away. He's too far away. I'm no, sure the pink Fexus is moving up. Maniac's going to force him out. In. Here comes the stun. The silence as well. Fexus dead toe right in the lane. Down he goes. The equalizer for SK Gaming. Now, this ward that he's got positioned, he put this ward down at the blue buff. If this was a little bit further over here, he would have seen this rotation a lot better. Mm -hmm. would have been a lot cleaner for him if he had it a little bit further towards the speed buff area. That would have saved him. Now in mid lane, you can see Sayo being aggressed on by Zeros as well. That's a tower, too, I, on the right. Well, Rafa's going to rotate over there, which means Sayo's opened up again to gang potential from mid, which is why Zeros is pressuring him. Yeah, I mean, they find that tier one over on the right side and further solidify their goal lead. XP, 5,400 gold, 4,000, I'm sorry, 3,500. Once again, SK Gaming dominating the early game. Yeah, they've put the pressure on all stages. The mid-camp control's been great. They've got the golf here, obviously, and in the jungle as well, stealing away buffs wherever possible. I mean, that red buff steal at the start was great just to begin with. And then, you know, Maniac carried that on by stealing away the blue right under the nose of Fexes. Uh, Mortality really wanted to be at least even in this game. And, it, you know, it, now it just kind of comes down to, you know, it's a test of their metal. 
right? It, like, it really is. How much can they keep their head in the game now fighting down once again from a multi-thousand golden XP deficit? Uh, it's only 12 minutes in. The game is still large and at hand. There's a two-level difference between Frezzy and Badger right now, but I'm not too worried about that because it means Mox is getting further ahead. Reels taking to the sky. Oh, can they find something? Captain Twig's going in deep here. Going to get the blind onto two targets, slowing them both down. Rafa's low. The snipe comes out as well. The leap backwards going out from Rafa. Good damage from Silo in mid, though, and the burp from Frezzy's going to secure it, but Maniac is involved in this fight. The wall onto Rafa was good. Can they find the damage to bring him down is the question. Going to get back to Tarange. Here comes Fex says no. They just can't, they can't lose anything else here. Uh, they won that exchange. <laughs> like, just win the exchange. Right? Pretty Take much. what you get. Don't try to force support things. Support for mid. Support for mid. A level eight support. He's level nine yeah. now, but it's a level for eight a level support 14. for a level 14. Yeah. I'm very, very worthwhile. Yeah, big play there. Very, very worth it indeed. Uh, they tick back up a bit in the golden experience, most importantly, the experience for them at this stage in the game. Right side lane, Maniac. Raffer's going to be here. He's got the ultimate, but... but no, no. Raffer not going to be able to aggress. I mean, Maniac, he's just too tanky at this point. I mean, Fex does have his ultimate as well. They could have tried to dive the tower with that as well. There's a minion wave, but just going to continue to farm it and try and push it in a little bit. But under the tower, it's going to be a hard ask for them. Moex, have a little look at his build right now. We can see he's got the device going online. So has Apollo with that reels. Um, difference between those two right now, it's not substantial. There's a 600 gold difference. And yeah, most of that is on well. that light blade. Yeah. Um, and looking over across the way at Maniac here with that value build, going for the, the casual uh, silver talisman. No, no, I'm sorry. That's the emerald talisman. Uh, so just a lot of rank two items, a lot of very cost efficient stuff. Once again, chin size, you know, bridging the gap. It looks like Fex is going for Book of Toth on this on build here as well. He's not going to go for the Warlock Sash, which we normally mm -hmm. see. Going for the Book of Toth here, so he's going to do a lot of damage if he can get there. I guess with the front line that he's going to have in Bacchus and with Rafa going in Sayo, you know, obviously with those meatballs should be enough I destruction. I think he's built Book of Toth in every game so far. Oh, we'll see, because Real's going to actually use a Sentry Ward himself. Real Sentry Warded himself. Clears oh, out the wards in his own lane, like, <laughs> okay. Okay, this is this is game time. But that's what you need to do when you get these these stages of the game. But you know when you've got this small lead, abuse it by using sentry wards to keep the lead and keep forcing them to lose gold. Fex is being pressured away by Maniac once again, back to his own tier two tower here. And the Gold Fury is under threat again. And once this happens, Maniac can rotate. Oh, Moex has actually used his leap here, and I don't think he realizes that SK is going to wrap around. They're going to have a great initiation. Badger, ultimate to come here at any moment. Boom, there it is. Finding two Moex to fall. Frezzy, not much she can do. Raffer's going to fire off the ultimate, but it's just a short distance one. In the meantime, Sayo was cleaned up by Captain Twig, trying to rotate over as well. And now Sayo is out of this fight. Twig's going to backstab this. They're going to move, and he misses the damage out onto Frezzy, but Apollo's in the air. They'll clean up Raffer. Twig does get Frezzy as well. It's a four man wipe. Just Fex is alive. tier two. And that is going to be a tier one. And yeah, the tier two as well. Potentially the Gold Fury if I they would prefer too, that. And go gold. Yeah, That's I get what the, I think in this situation. Yeah, get the lane control. They've I agree. Ross, they've got the heals. They've got, they've got a minion, full minion wave coming through Indeed. as well. So with that heal from Ross, this is a tier two straight onto the Gold Fury, straight back to base, back to lanes, continue going. It's also a, a pretty important kill there that they got on the Sayo during that rotation. Oh, very. No stacks on the Book of Toth yet. Exactly. And the one thing about Sayo as well was he was the kind of leader of the team. He's involved in both those two kills. He got the first blood that mm -hmm. we saw as well. And for, to bring him down in the rotation Jeez. gives a bit of love back to Twig, who had a bit of a hard start to this game. This looks like game one. It's, it's a little... No, it's not as bad as game one. Uh, I don't think it's the same. 10,000 experience, 7,500 gold in 15 minutes. It just feels like it came around a differently, a different way. In yeah, all no, it did, it did. It's just, but the advantage but, that they have is very similar to what they had in game one. That's true. The one invade, they the have to want to fight Vader soon. caused so many issues. Here comes Frezzy going aggressive onto Badger. Great impale from Moex, but the wall going to buy himself some time. They're trail looking for Badger here. Snipe doesn't connect there. And they you can see Zero's zero. trying to juke away. He's going to drop down to Vexers, who's still chasing after people with ghosts. Reels jump down onto Mercury, but Mercury going to get away. He's just going to back away as Frezzy comes in with a burp. Oh, the dot from Maniac. Maniac. Slam dunk oh, it. Picks it up, and now Frezzy's going to get caught out against three. He just used belly flop, but Sai might be able to help him out here. Maniac is enormous. <laughs> the farm on this he's shock so, right now so is out of control. Look at him. He's just happy to continue running forward. Going to chase them all the way back to base. If he can keep Look at chasing, him just chunking Fexes. All the time. Chunk, chunk, chunk. He's got chins. What do you expect? I mean, when you get chins online, people are going to slowly disappear. And now he's going after Mo Moex too. And Fezzi's getting caught out of position. The bat being chased down by Reels. Fezzi's going to give his life away to somebody. But who's it going to be? It's going to be Reels picking up yet another kill there. And it continues to slip out of the grass of mortality. Fighting for their tournament life. Two games advantage to SK Gaming. It looks like they may take this one in three straight. It's looking likely Are right they now. Are going to fire giant here? Yeah, yeah their, their damage spike is way too high. Why would you not? They've got chins online with Chuck. They've got the sustain from Rock. And they have out. the executioner as well, which means the Chuck's going to hit like a truck. Yeah, exactly. It's going to go down very, and very they have, quickly. And they have the super valuable. Can Sal do something with the ultimate? Can Sal do something? Does he know? He knows. 
He's too and late. And now, yeah, he put that one too deep. He's not going to find anything off of that. It was right on money for the fire giant, but he was just too late to find that one out. Main is going to chase yeah, him with Maniac it. With no the help of Badger as well. He's taking a lot of poke with that shield. will buy him some time. Thor's in the sky as well. He dunks down onto Sile. The wall confirms the damage from the double tap. And now they can push on mid. Oh, this is hairy. <laughs> I mean, you have like super value builds coming out here. You have Raw with the three most cost efficient damage items in the game, and you have a Chop with two level two items into a chin size. And Fexus, he's gonna die to the first here. Frezzy's dead as well. That's gonna be a four man white. Moex is split pushing the left side, but he has to go back. SK Gaming's gonna push down the mid lane. They're gonna take yet another tier two. Only one tower remains. Phoenix is exposed in two lanes. SK Gaming may be coming to Atlanta. It looks really like that they're going to. Now Moex is against a full minion wave as well as a full team with Fire Giant. As you see, Zero's going. He has to leap away. Oh, Zero's do they just smell blood zoning. here? He's just zoning. He pushed it. No, they're not, gonna, they're not gonna risk this. They're not gonna do a mistake. Stake. They're just going to go back tier two tower right inside first, but then we go back into this one. Oh, man. So is there any way for Mortality to get themselves back into this game? With yes. no towers remaining and a mid Phoenix down. Yes, but it's going to take 20 minutes, I feel. With the station that they're inside right now. Raffer's dead. Raff is in trouble there as well. He's gone in deep, going to get picked off. Frezzy has to jump away. You can see Morix gets walled off. He has to leap over the wall too. That has to engage down. Now they're going to have to lose the Phoenix as well. Fexes can't do a lot about that. Sile's around the side. He's going to use the Earthshaker. Minimal right. damage going to come out of that even if it does connect. Second Phoenix goes down. Are they looking for the end? They're looking for Sayo. They're going to be able to find Sayo. They collapse right onto him. Nothing you can do about that. The burst is just too big. The heal reduction comes out from the Bacchus, but they're still going to be able to heal up fairly well. Fexus continues forward, channeling his ultimate, no, but he's going to fall no. as well. Doing some nice damage for he does go down, but it's not going to be enough to hold them for long. Left side Phoenix, they're going to look to get the trifecta here. Yep, all three Phoenixes down. They can even look to end straight away, go back to base by then end. It's the safer option, but they've got the Fire Giant anyway. They can just look to end this one out. I mean, respawns are relatively low, but two members still dead. All three Phoenixes down, Fire Minions in mid lane now. Oh, I think they smelled it. It's no. over. No, they called it. It's a surrender. SK Gaming. Beats Mortality in three straight. They're coming to the World Championship. They're coming One to Atlanta. Fifth and sixth seed coming to this tournament. Both wild card entries managed to knock out the top four teams from the Pro League. Successfully in SK Gaming. Madness. Didn't drop a game. And let's let's harken back to the kickoff lane here in Europe, where it was Coast and SK doing the exact same thing. Both of those bottom seeds coming out over on That's top true. of the top seeds here in the European land. SK Gaming just played. They looked like the strongest team here. Well, when, when you look at the record of what happened, 3-0, 2-0, North, they didn't drop a single game. Not a game drop. Everything. The, the record stays intact for what they do at Lands because once again at this ESL studio, they've done a fantastic job. Can they do the same thing in Atlanta is my next question. That's what we're going to find out next, I guess. Wow. I mean, unbelievable stuff coming out of SK Gaming there. And well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a uh, very, very one-sided series. SK Gaming seemed to have Mortality's number. Uh, it, not sure if it was preparation or just individual skill, but they made it happen for themselves and boot camps just pay off. Well, the boot camp that SK Gaming did twice in Cologne has really helped them out. They've done a very, very good job. They hit the team shaking hands and Mortality lads. Great sports to Mortality lads as well. I love every single one yeah, of them. They're really very nice smiley, guys. very laughy, happy. It's very disappointing for them, but SK played very, very well overall. It's unfortunate for them that this has had to happen, but only yeah. two teams could go. You know, it's funny. It's like I, the Cloud9 guys are saying, you know, it would have been much better to just have th gotten 3 0 then kind of what happened to them, or, you know, they nearly took game Kimo two. Kimo Fred said the same thing. He yeah. said, I'm glad that we got 2 old and we didn't have what happened to Cloud9 right. happen to us. Exactly, I'm exactly. I think, more, I think you see the same thing here coming out of uh, out of Mortality. You know, they, they seem pretty pretty upbeat. I think, you know, it's it's easier as a player to say they were the better team today yeah. than to say we we did that to ourselves. We made the mistake. Exactly. You yeah. don't never want to have the mistake yourself. You want to have the other team play better than you. And now we're going to have the finals. Now, the finals is generally is for seeding for Worlds. There's wow. some cash on the line as well. And, and look, seeding mattered a lot in this tournament, didn't it? I agree. Wait, no, it didn't because the fifth and the sixth seed won. No, no, I agree. <laughs> no, I agree. But where they, they fell lose, the bracket? Now they want to lose because the lowest seed in the EU always wins. Yeah, there you go. Ah! Yeah. It's going to be a game of throws, perhaps, in the finals. No, oh, that'd be good. Uh, it is going to be a best of three that we'll be running in the finals, guys. Uh, best of fives for the semis because those were the qualifiers for Worlds, the top two teams going. This best of three is simply for who gets the greater chunk out of that 50K. I want to see if SK can go and beat him through the whole tournament. Congratulations to SK Aquila? and Aquila. They will Please. be your representatives for the European region in Atlanta for Worlds in January, fighting for their share of the now $1.4 million prize pool. I'm growing. 
and growing, continuing to grow. That's going to do it for me on the commentary desk. Hindu Man will stick around and bring you the finals with Brandon. And that's going to do it for us here for our coverage of the championship round moving over to the finals. But before we do that, let's toss it over to Zoe. Zoe, thank you very much and take it away. Thank you, guys. We're back here on stage. And unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to Mortality. At least they're still smiling. That's nice. Please give a big round of applause for Mortality. It was amazing to see you guys playing the SPL. It did so well. I'm really, really sad to say goodbye right here, but you got yourself 5,000 years and a big thanks from us for showing us some great games here on stage. And uh, now we're coming to our winners. SK Gaming, ladies and gentlemen, they made it to the finals. All right, so Aquila was already head over heels and super happy. Uh, I guess it's needless to say you guys must be pretty happy too. Um, did you expect to go for another clean win, a 3-0? Um, it's hard to say really. I mean, from the first two games, after the first game we played unbelievably so well. Everyone played so good. Second game was a little bit harder. But then after that, going into the third game, it started going well and we kind of knew we were going to close it out. So I guess we wasn't excited as Aquila was because we kind of knew we were going to be able to close it out. But yeah, obviously, this is what we prepared for. We wanted to go to Worlds, and we've done it now. So just looking forward, next step, start planning and prepping again, and hopefully all goes well from there. Yeah, I mean, we wish you good luck, that's for sure. Uh, Aquila is going to come up next for you. This is going to be the finals. The winner is going away with 25,000. And of course, you're also going to be the EU regional champion. Um, where, where do you see yourself there? Do you think you're going to repeat a clean swipe and just go undefeated here in this tournament? Or do you actually think that's going to be a tougher one? Um, well, from how they played before, um, I mean, obviously, Fnatic was fan favorite. So from how they played there, they've been playing really, really well. So. It's going to be a tough game, but we're going to give it 100% just like we did here and hopefully it can go well for us. All right. Well, we wish you good luck and we're definitely looking forward to see your team here on stage again. So thanks a lot for joining me once more, of course. Congratulations. Those guys are also going to represent the European region in the World Championship. So that's going to be amazing to see who's going to come out as the European champion itself. But before that's going to happen, we're going to take a look at the last game we saw again with Jason. Thank you for that, Zoe. At SK, congratulations once again, at least for me personally. A fantastic job by them taking a 3-0. And the replay we're going to be watching is about, I think, 15 minutes in, and we're going to be following the perspective of zeros on that Thor. And it's kind of obviously a key point in the game where we saw four kills go in favor to SK, and then, of course, a Gold Fury right off the back of that. Let's get the replay on the screen really quickly just so we can kind of walk you through. And I want to point out Badger, zeros, and Captain Twig all did a fantastic job. You see the stun going to come in, takes the beads away from OX, and an amazing ultimate coming out of Badger just completely locks them down, allowing them to pick up that first kill. In the meantime, Captain Twig gets a solo kill on a Sio on the back side of him. And then instead of you know heading towards the front side, helping Siege away at the turret, he comes in from the back and completely cuts off the retreat from this one. Of course, it's going to be an easy dive from there, picking up the next two kills and securing that gold fury to go from, well, only a 3,000 difference to, as you can see, a ginormous amount about, was it 7,000 at the end of the whole skirmish from that one, even getting two turrets uh, throughout the entirety of that one as well. So it was a fantastically well-executed fight. Again, I want to give credit to Zeros right there uh, with Badger and Captain Twig working really well together. It just completely locked down those four kills and gave him such a huge lead coming into uh, well, the final game. Meantime, I'm going to head back to Zoe here one more time here before we kick off the Grand Finals of the EU Regionals. Thank you so much, Jason. That's definitely going to be a great final we have coming up for you guys. We're going to head into a very short break, and after that, we will find out who's going to be the EU Regional Champion for Smite. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back.